Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about some new discoveries in regards to what happens around black holes. And not just any black holes, supermassive black holes. And in this particular case, one of the recent studies decided to investigate and to try to model the formation of these really really humongous waves that seem to be created by very unusual effects coming from the center of the black hole. The waves that the scientists refer to as tsunami waves. With this beautiful illustration by Nima Apkenar, sort of showing us how all of this might look like. And depending on the size of the actual black hole, these tsunami waves could be up to about 10 light years in size. And so let's talk a little bit more about this study and the discovery, starting with the idea of tsunamis here on Earth. So we know that on Earth, for a tsunami to form, usually some sort of an underwater event has to happen, such as usually an earthquake or a sudden displacement of matter that then creates a displacement of water. And here, as a tsunami wave approaches the shore, it first decreases in speed, but then increases in size. And eventually, it ends up delivering a huge amount of water and can last for anywhere from a few hours to possibly even a few days. So this is tsunamis in a nutshell. But by using a computer modeling simulation and by trying to analyze what happens around black holes, the scientists behind this paper right here were able to work out that a very similar event could actually happen around black holes, but instead of water in this case, it would be gas. A lot of gas. Tremendous amounts of gas. Although in this case, it's also important to kind of try to figure out how all this looks like in terms of structure. So we're still sort of learning about black holes and we're still trying to understand what sort of happens in their vicinity. For small black holes, it's usually a little bit different than for massive black holes, and so it's obviously not clear if this happens around all of the black holes. But for a supermassive black hole, such as the one in the center of the Milky Way, or for any massive black hole over 1 million masses of the Sun, they will usually start forming relatively similar structures. If simplified, it might look something like this. There's going to be an accretion disk, or more like an accretion torus around it. It's also going to produce the corona visible right here, and it's also going to have a lot of wind outflow. So this is sort of the simple version of what's known as the active galactic nucleus. But the picture does get a little bit more complex as you move away from the center of the black hole and as you start seeing what else is going on in the vicinity of the accretion disk and around the accretion disk. For example, first of all, around the disk there is a huge torus of a lot of different cold gas that doesn't actually fall into the black hole and sort of orbits around this region without really being affected by the black hole itself. And because this gas can be really really thick, it's usually almost impossible for the scientists to actually see the black hole itself or to try to peer through the thickness of the disk to see the insides. Now at the same time, right above the accretion disk, there's actually a tremendous amount of really really hot plasma. Very similar stuff to what we find inside our sun. And a lot of this super hot plasma orbits far enough from the black hole that it's not going to fall into the black hole, but it also produces a lot of different X-ray radiation. In the past, these X-ray emissions have even been used to try to map the region of a black hole by seeing various reflections from the accretion disk itself. And these regions are so incredibly bright in the X-rays that they're visible from really, really far away in the universe. But at the same time, these emissions are sort of responsible for what's known as the outflow. Sort of like the solar wind, but in this case it's a black hole wind that's moving extremely fast. And so it's sort of believed that it creates something like this. There's a lot of dust coming out of from this side. It also creates a kind of a torus that orbits as far away as 100 light years away from the black hole itself. And it also creates a really large region of cold dust. Some which has also been proposed to be a region where new stars and possibly even new planets can form. In other words, it's a really, really intriguing and super interesting region that a lot of scientists would love to see one day. But because of this really powerful outflow from the center, the power coming from these X-rays and from the gas outflow can actually create some really interesting effects in the region around the black hole. And so here the scientists were able to model what probably happens around a typical massive black hole if it does have a really thick region of this cold dust around it. So first of all, it's already been established that there are probably a lot of different types of clouds and a lot of different types of dust in the region around a massive active black hole, including what's known as the clumpy outflow that the scientists believe is created by the sudden X-ray emissions from the accretion disk itself of the massive black hole. And it's also believed that a lot of these clouds, a lot of this gas, is extremely hot, possibly 50,000 degrees Celsius or about 10 times as hot as our own sun. 
But slightly farther away, at a distance of maybe about 10 to 100 light years away from the black hole, in the region of this coal dust right here, this is actually where we start finding a lot of different turbulence and a lot of different activity very similar to what you expect from here on planet Earth. So first of all, a lot of different kinds of waves start to form. For example, the so-called Karman Vortex Street. The unusual waves you can see simulated right here formed in various gases and in various liquids. Although in this case, the size of these vortices would be huge, each of them would be approximately one light year across. Moreover, as this clumpy outflow starts hitting some of this cold gas located around the black hole, the shear pressure from the interaction sort of has a very similar effect to what you see right here. It essentially is responsible for creating some sort of a tsunami gas wave. And so the interaction between these really, really hot emissions and the cold gas that's already there ends up producing tsunami waves that could be up to 10 light years in size or maybe even more if the black hole is bigger and if there's more gas around it. But because of the distances involved here, all of this of course takes a really, really long time. Even at the fastest possible speed of movement of about 20% the speed of light, it would take hundreds of years for all of this interaction to start producing these waves and then probably thousands of years for this gas to form a tsunami. So this right here represents an extremely slow process and something that we will probably never be able to see in actual real time. We can maybe only see the waves after they've already been created or possibly detect the interaction between the super fast moving hot gas and the relatively slow moving cold gas. And the scientists in this paper believe that both the tsunami waves and the Karman vortex street structures start being formed across this entire region hundreds of light years away from the central black hole. Which of course means that if we were to somehow be able to see what a typical supermassive black hole looks like from let's just say a thousand light years away from us, at the moment this image right here might actually show us what it really looks like, at least in terms of the artistic illustration. Although chances are it's also a lot more bright, it's also a lot more active in a lot of different other ways, and there are probably a lot of other structures we haven't really considered yet. But what's interesting about this study is that it's able to provide the explanation for the creation of these waves, while at the same time suggesting that the magnetic fields do not play as much of a role in this case in propelling the gas across the black hole region and in creating a lot of the outflow from the black hole itself. We do know that the magnetic fields here are pretty strong, but in this case they were able to explain this by actually ignoring the magnetic fields, which of course means that depending on the strength of the magnetic field, there could be a lot of other effects and a lot of other formations that have not been considered in this paper or in some other papers before that. But more importantly, this is still just a hypothesis and still just a proposition. None of this of course has been physically observed, but the scientists believe that by using some of the new telescopes, including some of the more advanced X-ray telescopes that are going to be operational in the next few years, with a mission known as XRISM being of particular interest in this case, we might actually have enough resolution to be able to see what exactly happens around these regions and how exactly the X-rays from a typical supermassive black hole end up influencing the gas on the outskirts. Or in other words, even though the idea behind black hole tsunamis sounds absolutely incredible, it still could be just an idea, just a hypothesis that could be proven wrong. Nevertheless, it's still a really, really cool proposition and something that I'm definitely going to be covering in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.